um, right, the sariras of uh, the Dhammakaya are the middle way. So the emphasis today is uh, Dhammakaya. There's the two things that the sariras and the Dhammakaya will come a little bit, uh, the explanation this to uh, later. In general, the Buddha Dharma is called a great path for liberation. And uh, we all know that this liberation is out of samsara. Um, but if we try to understand um, this in the context of um, the uh, Four Noble Truth, then we then we also need to understand what is samsara and different levels of heaven. Because sometimes we have been confused uh, by the levels of heaven because there are many, many levels uh, in there. Uh, then also the fact that there's also to sit uh, and then to sit our heaven, uh, where teachings are also delivered uh, by uh, Bodhisattvas. And attached to either emptiness or existence, one enters the path of the great vehicle. So neither in emptiness or existence is walking the middle way. Uh, it means it be totally out of samsara. The sariras of the Dhammakaya are the middle way of the Dhammakaya. I'll explain that right uh, at the end of the last slide. The principles of ultimate reality are invariable and immutable. So uh, obviously this one, the principle of ultimate reality, that means to the truth. Uh, truth is the event of the universal truth. And um, in a parable, that means it doesn't move, uh, it's permanent, immutable. You, can, you can't shut off the truth because the truth is inside you. The nature of truth substance is within you. Okay, so that voice cannot be muted. So the master's explanation, uh, the Buddha Dharma is a great path of awakening only by letting go of attachments and ignorance are we able to drive uh, more deeply into the Dharma and understanding um, better. So do I do, do, I do jump more deeply into the Dharma? It's all about self-realization. Uh, if we can completely understand the Buddha's teachings, then we are on a path to liberation. But the problem is that um, we have an unknowing mind. Unknowing mind means it's not awakened. Not awakened means it's unenlightened. Therefore, um, many times and many moments, we do not know what we think, we do not know what we say, and we do not know what we do. Okay, and that is the problem. And much as much as we know about the Dharma, um, and therefore, when someone tells us that what you're doing is incorrect, we don't like it. And we are, I talk, spoke about things about sensitiveness um, yesterday. So I don't like it, then we cannot correct ourselves. Then we continue repeating that. The sarira is the makaya, the middle way uh, of the tagata. So leave the sarira out first. So dhammakaya, which is what the dhamma is, is teaches to walk the middle way. So as we enter the middle way, the great vehicle dharma, we are drawn near the Sariras of Dhammakaya. So we walk the middle way, we are drawn, and what, what is the true path? That is what the truth of the dharma is. We understand that everything is empty, like an illusion or mirage. But we must further understand this is true emptiness. And within that emptiness, there is wondrous existence, which should therefore be, not be attached to emptiness or in existence. So if we then go back and understand the fourfold mindfulness that uh, body is impure, feeling is uh, suffering, mind is impermanent, permanent and phenomenon is about ourself. So if that's the case, the arising of what we see as real in our life is purely a manifestation of the mind. So even our body is only composition of the four elements, which will dissipate at the end of life. So is our mind. And that thought then ceases. So that understand, that would understand that is true emptiness. But then within this emptiness, there is, we cannot deny that what you call that is this existence. This existence, um, it's you can say that this is the, our, our thought that we have from our true suchness. 
And um, so it's what the question is, what are we going to do with this existence? So we understand that truth of that existence, that is a wondrous existence. But then having said that, no, we should not be attached to, to uh, empty existence, but it does help us to understand the truth of the nature. And that's what the true suchness is about, which I share with you a little bit of my understanding of that uh, later in a contemplation later. Seeking the Dharma in all four directions refers to four great vows and the four infinite minds. So the lessons learned here. Uh, I'm just mindful that I need to finish by 6.55, right? It's okay today, Brother, brother Chin. Today our uh, time is uh, no, no, no limit. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, Brother, uh, brother Joe's session is cancelled. Oh, okay. You can go and get mine. <laughs> then I should have told you a lot of stories. <laughs> I was rushing through this. Let's start all around. over again. Let's start all over again. <laughs> no, it's okay. It's okay because I need to carry on with my trend of thoughts. The sutras containing the Buddha's teachings are called Sariras or Dhammakaya. Now, my home sister mentioned about Sarira. Sariras. Um, I, I, everybody understands what is Sariras, right? Um, in Canada, it's called Saleji. Yeah, have you ever heard of it? Yeah, um, yes. I'm have, have you have before, but not uh, so have, have you seen Sari before? No, leh. Sari Ras of High Masters, um, or any of you been a pilgrimage tree, trip and seen any of Sari Ras of the Buddha? Okay, so mm -hmm. this this are uh, in English is called relics. Okay, so this you see when when um, when. Actually, uh, the Buddha knew that when um, he entered Pari Nirvana in Kushinaga, um, he actually gave instruction of how the um, uh, Sariras were to be uh, distributed. And um, so some of these Sariras uh, exist, supposedly exist until today. Um, then you have um, the ones that I've seen, uh, the finger relic and the tooth relics. Uh, these are uh, known around and you go on a pilgrimage trip. And um, so even some of the high masters, uh, when they are uh, cremated, uh, they have these saviras and which relics. And only, uh, obviously, th this is to demonstrate the purity of the uh, practitioner. So they are trying to be a bit crystal-like. Um, and uh, obviously, there's uh, spiritual energy um, in there. But the point that Master is trying to say that the sutras containing the world's teach teachings are called Sariras or the Dhammakaya. In other words, and this is also resonate with what um, the Buddha in response to Ananda's question, and what happens uh, to uh, what happens after the Buddha and the Parinavana? And the Buddha responded, they say there's still the Dhamma. So that this answer is referring to the Sariras of the Dhammakaya. The Dhammakaya refers to the Dhamma body, right? The Buddha has three bodies. Um, and this Dhammakaya for an enlightened being like us is the only body we can see because it's in a physical form. The others we cannot, the two are two we cannot see uh, unless you are enlightened. It does not require death and cremation for Sariras to come into being. The two Sariras are non arising and non ceasing. And they are everlasting principles, which goes back to these two points here, which is invariable and immutable. Okay, so that is what is in, in them. So <clears throat> why is that the case? Because Dharma has been around since the beginnings, beginningless time. We don't even know when. I mean, it's, it, it's from um, it, the perfect beginningless time cannot even be as well understood. So therefore, um, but we know that Dharma is, when the Buddha brought the Dharma uh, into this period of time, uh, we know that it has come back and because the Buddha said so. So therefore, it's everlasting principles. Therefore that, if anything that is permanent, that the Dharma is permanent. So the teaching given by the Buddha as a sariras of the Buddha's entire Dhammakaya and that, I must also mention that the Dharma um, that we are given by the Buddha 
is the same Dharma by giving all the other Buddha. So then therefore entering this perfect wisdom is entering all the, the Dharma doors. Um, you know, uh, Sister Vaiva asked a question yesterday that um, does one have to be in a monastic before and before uh, becoming a Buddha? And that was a question, right? And I, I responded um, from two angles. One is the state of enlightenment, um, then uh, the supreme enlightenment of the Buddha. And obviously the, the, the Buddha has shown that obviously his monastic before entering Pali Nirvana, and that's what we know. But I in contemplating on that, and I think it has to be because you can't have a lay practitioner leading the Sangha, isn't it? It's logical. So it has to be a monastic uh, to lead uh, the Sangha. So we, we yeah. You know, right? So you accept the ex explanation, right? <laughs> so for yeah. example, Vimala Kirti was a lay practitioner, but he wasn't leading the Sangha. Although, although, uh, he, he, his wisdom, uh, even Sariputra was, was so-called fearful uh, of the knowledge and the wisdom of Vimala Kirti, but he never led the Sangha. Okay, so therefore, it's only logical that uh, before entering the uh, uh, the Supreme Enlightenment, it has to be in a monastic. All right, in contemplation, uh, I, I, I prepared this one uh, because it's mainly because the teaching today mainly about the middle way, about the Dharma. So I, I, I knew that I have a little bit limited time, but I uh, this time when days are limit, uh, time is limited, I try to prepare a very short one and please, but for some reason I prepared a long, a long one today. Uh, and I didn't expect that I have time, but uh, thankfully I have time and here, here I, I will try to share a little bit uh, with you. Every desireless has a mystery. Every desire is a manifestation. Now, why is desireless a mystery? Because we are in the desire realm. And the Buddha Dharma teaches us to be desireless by letting go, by detachment. And in the human realm, desire is the thing that we understand. So therefore, desireless is actually a mystery to us. And um, every desire is a manifestation. So isn't desire arises from our heart and our mind? And in truth, that desire is actually emptiness. But we manifest that and it arises from us. So then, therefore, you understand, trying to understand that when you accept that that desire is a manifestation, therefore, without this manifestation, then the desires can be attained, but become a mystery because we're stuck in the desire realm. The mystery is the doorway for a seeker. So if you then understand the sick one, it is within you, then you got to enter that door, that desireless door, and that is the doorway for the seeker. But you must then understand, and I say it, it's a mystery, because then you understand that a, a ordinary mind who say desireless, I just walk away. It doesn't mean that you're going to walk away from your family. So that is the mystery that you need to find what it is to understand as a householder, but this desireless um, realization is. Cold is simply the absence of heat. Darkness is simply the absence of light. 
cold and darkness do not exist. Okay, so you remember if, if you are a physics student and study physics in school, do you remember um, you, you measure heat by centigrade and Fahrenheit, right? Do you remember there's a measure called Kelvin? Do you know the definition of zero Kelvin? Zero Kelvin means the absence of total heat energy. That's zero Kelvin. And when a zero Kelvin, I, I can't remember the measurement, it's minus like more than 100 uh, degrees. And that is the absence of heat. So therefore, when you take out the heat energy of that's cold and that we define as cold, okay? But, but it actually doesn't exist because there's no energy and there's no heat energy, that's why it's cold. So therefore, cold actually doesn't exist. Same thing with darkness. Darkness is simply an absence of light. And I explained to you all before, if a room is dark, and just to prove the point, if the room is dark, you turn on the light, and the light energy is that it's lighted. You see, you cannot bring darkness into a lighted room. Because, it, because, it, that's, because darkness doesn't exist, you've got to bring it up, but light energy exists. And uh, so therefore, both cold and darkness, actually they do not exist. All things are evil because there is an absence of goodness. So when we do not do good, evil arises, darkness arises. But then the way that we, we live in a world of duality, and short is defined by the long, and bad is defined by the good. But if we understand the wisdom behind this, then we see things, neither is that short, neither is that long, neither is that bad or that is that good. What is bad, we can be good. What is good, it can be bad. We can learn from both sides. And that's what walking in the middle path is. So from the bad that we learn to be good, and from the good, we can learn how to address the bad. So existence is seemingly real in the absence of the emptiness. So because we do not want to understand what emptiness is, and because we want to understand that this teaching, we only know about existence. But now that we try to understand emptiness, then we realize that how do you define what this existence is about? So because it's real, and this is what the, uh, the I just explained to you, the phenomena of people matters objects, but of self is just a manifestation of the mind. So that existence uh, is there, is real, but real is not necessarily the truth. And that because it's the absence of emptiness. So existence and emptiness support each other. One subsists because of the other. This is the paradox of duality. The paradox of duality, it defines each other. And that's the worldly mind, how the worldly mind will understand. But you want to go into the nature through suchness, then neither is there emptiness nor existence. And that's the middle way. We don't gravitate toward either one. And then a seeker of the truth finds the meaning in between to walk the middle way neither abiding in existence nor in emptiness. So on relationship, um, uh, following on from, from that, one who understands others is knowledgeable. One who understands oneself is wise. It, there's nothing you can do um, um, nobody can change someone else and that, that person is prepared to change themselves. So you can the best, the best you can do, you can understand others and it's knowledgeable. But more importantly, is understand oneself because you've got a power, you got a power to choose to change yourself. Offer your treasures to everyone who comes away. Neither are you abiding in existence nor in emptiness. So what are your treasures? After all, there is nothingness in the end. So, which is actually what Master is trying to, to, to teach us. 
we try to offer our treasures, whether it's um, getting in donation, whether you have an effort or in time. And this is for the sake of others. So be in equanimity of the middle way, the seek for the truth in between. So we understand that then we shouldn't be so afflicted by whatever relationship that we may have. And we seek to understand those relationships within, uh, within our inner nature. Okay, God and brothers and sisters. Sadhu, 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 uh, Brother Chin, uh, thank you so much for the. Can't hear you.